One man's songbird is another man's pest species, as Rich Leonard proves on the farm in South Africa. Phil Price is hard at work testing Crossman air pistols. We've got hot air, we've got air streaming. Welcome to Airheads. Well, it's a nice, beautiful, warm morning. We're looking forward to doing some pest control for the De Beers here at the De Beer Ranch. And uh, today, we're going to be focusing in on starlings. Starlings are a real pest around this area. They carry lice, spread disease to the livestock, and pick up seeds off the fields, which are meant to grow valuable food for animals. They are a major health concern around the sheds and stores where they make their nests. Often you find these nests infested with parasites which are harmful for both humans and animals. So let's see if we can get the job done, get a whole lot of pests down for the De Beers. Once again I'll be using my trusty Air Arms S510 and 177 calibre. The gun never disappoints and has more than enough power to get the job done. It wasn't long and I spotted the first starling of the day. Right there, right there. There. Okay, it's going to come out now. Yes, okay. <laughs> First one of the day. Yeah, straight down. Look at that. Alright, this here is a glossy starling. It's uh, got this really nice glossy blue shimmer. So, one of the better looking ones of the species, but nevertheless, just like any other starlings. Ah, let's keep going. I kept on working my way down the road to the old farmhouse, where I was sure to find some more starlings. All right, we're coming up to an old farmhouse now. This is normally a hotspot for starlings. So I'm quite sure we're gonna see a whole bunch of them here. We're gonna just walk in real quietly and see if we can pull us off. It wasn't long and I spotted another bird. There he is, there he is. Did you see him? Okay. So we're going to come to the Straight down. There's quite a few around. I just saw them fly off, but the, the flock didn't go far, so we're just going to wait around over here and see if the flock does come back again. Now let's make a move, let's go around him. I think we've got to set up just around the back of these trees here and use the trees as our cover. I'm quite sure the flock will just keep coming in and we'll get a shot after shot, so let's see if we can get set up. This place was full up of these pests and I just knew we could get a few here. Everything just seemed to be working and no time one of the birds came back. Yeah, got him. Just, just, just. I think this is going to be the spot. Get a nice clear line of sight just in front of the shed and uh, it looks like the, there is a nest in there and the flock keeps coming so I think what we're going to do is just bunker down over here set up more of an ambush and um, just wait and hopefully we can just pick them off and just take out that whole flock which is exactly what we want The strategy was working perfectly and in very little time we had a couple birds down Awesome. That was very cool. 
were busy shedding starlings right here by the farmhouse off the fence post and he was right next to us on the left side so that was so, super cool There he is, yeah, awesome. There we go. Oh, that's great. All right. So this here, my friends, is a pied starling. We've been seeing a whole flock of pied starlings coming in on the farmhouse. And this one's just, just on the branch right by us. So I think we're going to go pick up a whole lot of those other starlings. And let's go have a look on the roof and see if we can find that nest. The day was going great so far. The old farmhouse was really proving to be a hot spot for the starlings. We had taken out some of these harmful pests and now I was also going to see exactly why the farmer didn't want them around in his stores and his sheds. All right, here's the first one. There we go. There we go. And here's the other one right here. So, and there's the other one there in the grass. So, yo, good plan managed to nail two off the same post and then a couple others along the way here so job done all right I think I think the nest is right in here let's have a look did see them flying inside the barn so let's have a look there we go that's the nest right over there there's some big holes all around here and if you look inside the holes at an angle you you see a couple nests so that one's probably the most obvious you can see all the little twigs and branches and, and some of the sheep's wool, which is perfect for what the starlings would want in the nest, but also perfect for holding lice. So, as you can see, it's exactly why these birds need to be eradicated. So, let's get moving further down the road and see if we can get some more. I collected up the starlings and decided to move back down the road towards the farmhouse and see if I can get some more birds down along the way. These starlings were just everywhere and it wasn't long before I came across some more of them. Yeah, there's a couple just down there. Come, come, come. I nailed the shot on the first one but didn't want to waste any time to take down the second. Straight down, just how we want it. <laughs> what a day and a job well done. The De Beer Ranch didn't disappoint and we got a whole lot of shooting in. Well, another super fun day out here doing pest control on the farm. I've had a great time hunting these starlings and I've been all the way to the other side of the farm where we found a starling hotspot and managed to take out a whole lot of these pests. Every one of these is one less the farmer has to worry about. So I'm sure Mr. De Beer is going to be a very happy man at the end of the day. Thank you, Rich. Good work there. And now for somebody else who always looks a little bit exotic, it's David with the Air Gunning News Service Hot Air. This is Hot Air. A Scottish head teacher has called the overhaul of the air gun licensing system in Scotland a farce. Tim Mackay from Aberdeenshire has been unable to use his air rifle for three months because of the application's logjam. Now his garden is overrun with rabbits. One of the shooters we featured in our film about target sprint has now got a top job in the sport. British Shooting is delighted to announce Martin Beard as head coach for Target Sprint. Introduced to the UK in 2016, Target Sprint is taking the nation by storm, with a number of athletes looking to qualify for the ISSF World Championships in Zool later this year. The Game Fair 2017 is welcoming its first air gun competition. Air Arms will offer visitors the opportunity to enter its speed shoot competition. Visitors can win cash prizes and all score cards will be entered into a free prize draw to win a brand new air arms rifle worth more than £800. The game fair takes place at Hatfield House on the 28th, 29th and 30th of July 2017. The 2017 World Hunter Field Target Championships took place at the Kelmar Show over the Easter Bank Holiday weekend. 
James McLachlan won the open competition with Vince Holland second. James also shot for Steyr in the manufacturer's team, which came first, with Vince shooting for Air Arms, which came second. Air Gunners have been out in force at a NRA meeting in the USA last week. Umrex had a stand and Pyramid Air, the world's largest internet air gun retailer, brought its range, plus the urban air gunner Rick Ward from Air Force Air Guns. And finally, a woman from Glasgow found a dying pigeon and tried to give it CPR. Posted by Charlie's My Name, the clip shows the woman giving the bird mouth to mouth, then chest compressions. But it is still, as she finds out, very dead. You are now up to date with hot air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you, David. Next up, Air Gunner editor Phil Price is back with his Air Gunner tips. This is a, a very, very popular American-made pistol. It's a Crossman 2240. The pistol itself has been the basis for any number of other variants that have gone along. For example, this one, you might recognise the, the action itself is that same pistol, but it's got a bolt-on stock and a longer barrel. And the longer barrel actually makes more use of the energy, so it's considerably more powerful. So that's probably about five foot-pounds. This is nearer to eight foot-pounds. Um, and this has been known for years as the Ratter. And they do make an excellent little ratting gun. It's small, it's light, it's easily manoeuvred. Um, you can put a silencer on, um, the thread is already there, it's just got a cap on it. With the silencer fitted, they are incredibly quiet. I mean, you, you know, you wouldn't even know someone was around the yard using it. And they're also quite inexpensive. Ratting guns do tend to get a bit of a hard life, tend to get knocks and scratches. If you put a scratch on this, you'll be fed up, but not heartbroken. Scratch your thousand pound day state, you're in tears, aren't you? Lots of pest control companies use these because they're cheap and they're reliable. It's just an ideal little gun for that kind of thing. This version, as you can see, has a slightly different action that has the scope rails machined in. So fitting a scope is a piece of cake. You just drop one straight on there. Small, light, reliable, ideal little gun for ratting. And the only way to kill a rat cleanly is to put one right through there. I mean, these guns are making somewhere in the region of eight foot pounds in 2.2 caliber. That's gonna be a good, clean kill. There's a second version of this, which is slightly more simple, um, doesn't have quite such a long barrel, uh, and the scope mounts are the ones I was saying about that you actually clamp on to the barrel, and it comes with a quite a, a quite a small, quite a simple little scope, but it's about 50 pounds less. So if you're on a budget, that's a good way of going about it. If it was me, I'd find the extra money and get the XL version, which comes with a much nicer scope, makes a bit more power, and it's only a couple of hundred pounds. I think it's worth spending the extra money. So CO2 guns generally are not as powerful as spring-powered guns or um, PCPs. This is making around nine foot-pounds. But actually indoors, in this kind of environment, a bit less power is your friend. If you have a very powerful gun, for example, if there was a, a feral pigeon up here, you took a shot, kill the feral pigeon, but punch a hole in the roof, the farmer's not gonna like you at all. So a little bit less power in 2.2 caliber tends to be the kind of shot that stays in the bird rather than going straight through and doing damage to the building. The carbon dioxide in here is liquid, and once it's pierced and flows out, becomes a gas, and that's what releases the energy. That is also um, dependent on temperature. So you get a very, very warm summer's day, they will actually make more energy than a very cold, frosty night. So that will affect your zero. Obviously, when it's flying faster, it'll go a little bit flatter. When it's running out of oomph, it'll drop down low a bit. The smart thing to do is to get your gun out of the car for a half an hour or so if you're coming ratting, for example, and let it normalize to those conditions, then fire a couple of shots, check your sights. It may be just a click or two on your scope, but you need to know exactly where it's shooting. So don't set it up in the middle of winter and expect it to be on in the middle of summer. It won't, something will have moved a little bit, but it's just a quick thing to change the scope. 
Lots and lots of CO2 guns these days are plinkers, BB guns, 6mm airsoft, that kind of thing. But you do get lead pellet firing ones like this, which are far, far more accurate and more powerful. So things like this make a, you know, for basic target shooting, they're good fun. But actually as a plinker for whacking tin cans and that kind of stuff, spinning targets, all those things, that's where I think these things are really, really good fun. And yeah, they're, they're, this is substantially built, it's gonna last. It's not like some of the very, very cheap sort of plasticky jobs. It's, it's a serious piece of kit. From Phil with his Crossmans to the wider world of air gunning on YouTube, it is air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Pigeons all over the world, starting with Patagonia Air Guns Chile, which is out with an AGT Vulcan Tactical. Back in the UK, Corvid Hunter records three short sessions after Whip Pigeons Craze and Jays, where not everything goes to plan. And in South Africa, Air Gunning's answer to a surf dude Matt Dubber is after Pigeons for the Bry with his FX Streamline. To Southern California, where Mountain Sport Air Guns is on a Jackrabbit and Grand Squirrel Hunt. DM Pest Control Northern Ireland provides this compilation of rabbit and squirrel shooting using an Air Arms S510. Mr. Dave Rat starts out looking for woodies, then moves on to rabbits in a horse paddock. Vermin Hunters TV's side takes his Sandwell Field Sports 22 calibre imp out after vermin. And finally, Cornwall Red Squirrel Project is trying to reintroduce red squirrels into an area overrun with greys. Find out how they are getting on here. Links to watch the videos are in this film's description, or I have playlisted them if you would like to send in a video for airstream ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv well that is it for this week thank you for watching airheads we're back in a month goodbye